The return up for Parlo. Leaves it off. Here's Mia Hamm. In the box. The shot. Go. She's got the record. Hey everyone, my name is Sabria Whitaker and I'm the founder of Grow the Game. Erica Piancastelli here, Tokyo 2021 Olympian. This is Carly Jackson, professional goaltender for the Buffalo Buttes. Hey everyone, this is Connor Moore, the social media manager of the Chicago Sky. For the first time in You are now listening to Women's Sports Matter. Women's Sports Matter. Hosted by Gianna Belcastro. Arete Ogunbowale wins the national championship for Notre Dame. everyone and welcome to another episode of women's sports matter your one-stop shop for all things women's sports like i said last week of course i'm doing another interview that's what this podcast is now um for the month of september it's going to be nwsl player interviews hopefully last week you enjoyed my conversation with chicago red stars defender amanda kowalski and if you haven't checked that out yet make sure you go do that I'm really excited to be interviewing a bunch of different uh, folks from a team besides the Red Stars because that's my home state team. But, you know, I got to branch out and just getting to know players from different teams that I may necessarily not know that much about um, is great education for me and for you. So you're welcome in a sense. Uh, Today, again, like I said, NWSL player interviews for the month of September. Got a great guest here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, My name is Kaylee Kurtz. I play for the North Carolina Courage, and this is my fifth year in the NWSL. Five years. That's a a lot. (laughs) It's crazy. It's sometimes when I think about it, it has gone so fast. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, this week has gone by so slow. Like, can we speed it up? So it just depends on where you catch me. Yeah, it, it depends on the day. I've uh, I just got started with doing a, a manager position with Nebraska soccer. What? So like understanding that kind of um calendar, like what's going on each week. I was like, how how do these people do it? Like college soccer is just whoo. You uh you spend time at two different colleges, mm-hmm. Richmond and South Carolina. Talk a little bit about how you got to Richmond and then after that, why you decided to make the transfer to South Carolina. Okay. Well, um, for me, I absolutely hated the recruiting process. It scared the crap out of me. Um, Talking on the phone was a huge task. And then talking to someone trying to basically sell myself to a college saying like, yeah, I would fit your program because this, this, this was not my forte when I was 16, 17, 18. Um, I ended up breaking my femur a month and a little bit of change before coaches were able to start contacting me for the September 1st of your junior year NCAA rules. And um, they'd, I'd already been in, in touch with a few schools. And once the news got out that I broke my femur, everyone dropped me. Um, so I had to start from scratch going into my junior year and Richmond was one of those that was very persistent. They really wanted me. They kept saying like I was going to help change their program around. Um, and at the time I kept saying, I wanted to focus on my next 40 years instead of my next four, um, meaning just get like an extremely good degree from a prestigious school. So I went to university of Richmond, um, it wasn't as competitive. We had a lot of injuries going into preseason. Our top goal scorer had to medically retire because of concussions. And then one of my friends that I played club with, she came to uh, University of Richmond with me and she tore her ACL second day of preseason. So that was another big loss. So it, it was just a struggle of a year. Um, and I wanted more competition than that league and that school was able to give me. So I 
started talking to my coach. He was great. Um, helped me switch, make the transfer over to South Carolina. Um, and South Carolina was one of those schools that I was talking to prior to the femur break and a little bit after, um, they just weren't pushing as hard as Richmond was. So, um, I did make the switch for my last three years and I had a good time. Transferring is not fun. I've done it twice. I've done it Ooh. twice, uh, high school and college. So yeah. I, I totally understand yeah. that whole thing. It's not, it's not a fun time. No, none of my credits transferred with me except as yeah. electives. And I was like, I'm pretty sure bio 101 is the same, whether I'm at Richmond or mm -hmm. I'm at South Carolina, like it's the exact same. And I even took, um, AP bio in high school and I got a four on my AP test, but Richmond only took fives. South Carolina took threes. So I took the AP test. Richmond didn't take it. So I retook bio 101 at Richmond. And then when I transferred to South Carolina, they were like, oh, well, because Richmond didn't take your AP bio test, that doesn't go. And surprise, the bio 101 doesn't transfer over from Richmond. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, that was just one of the crazy little nuances that you deal with when you're transferring. Yeah, I had some stuff that didn't transfer over. I went to my local community college in Northern Illinois. And so when I was transferring to, to Nebraska in the process of it, I was looking through all the stuff and I was like, wait, so this really, really hard math class that I was taking is not transferring and I have to take it all over again. Are you serious? Like, it's just the it's little the things. Worst. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I hate math and you're going to make me take it again. Yeah. I don't think I've ever worked so hard trying to like prove that that class was viable for a proper transfer. Yeah. I, I was like, this is the transcript. This is the grade I got. This was the curriculum. I sent it all over and they were like, nope, sorry. You got to take bio 101 again. Right. Okay. <laughs> I digress. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Don't recommend. Although I'm, I'm living the life here in Nebraska now. I would say it. Uh, I recommend it if you're really unhappy, but yes, stick it, stick it out for it's certain. It's not for everyone. <laughs> it's not. Uh, trying to graduate in three years instead of four after that was rough. A lot of summer school. A lot. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I was listening to one of your previous interviews where you were talking about um, in the final minutes of your last collegiate game, you decided that you wanted to be um, a professional soccer player. And I just kind of curious, um, like that thought process that you had for it and how soon you took those first steps to go in that direction. Um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a whirlwind that last game. The entire time I didn't know um, leading up into the NCAA tournament if I wanted to go pro or not. Um, there was probably like two two minutes left on the clock and we were playing North Carolina at my home stadium. And I just immediately started having a panic attack. Like, this is, this is it. This is it. Like, we'd hit the post twice. I hit the crossbar. It wasn't going our way. It just felt that way the, uh, that whole game. And I like actually had a panic attack, couldn't breathe. Um, the final whistle blew and I ran up into the stands and just like hugged and cried into my like dad's arms. And I was like, this, there's no way, like I'm, I can't be done. Um, however, for me, school and having my credits not transfer, that was more important finishing graduating. So I was told to enter the NWSL draft like long before, because I was um, named an all American that year. Um, first team scholar, all American. I had a, a good amount of accolades, um, but I told them I wasn't going to enter the draft because I didn't think it was fair for me to enter in May uh, after the season had been going on for four months, three months. Um, so I ended up entering the draft a day before it closed. No one took me. Um, and then once graduation hit, I got my first offer to go play in Sweden. Um, and so I just like immediately took it to stay in shape and get games in and uh, one. And then I guess just see the little bit of the world. 
I know that um, Sweden is one of the, I feel like, more popular overseas options. Yeah. Um, I'm not very familiar with the Women's Swedish League. Is there any, like, fun fact you have about your time in Sweden that you want to share with the listeners here? Um. Oh, I wasn't in the top league. There's, like, the Don Sven- Don Svenskin, and then I was in the league right below that, the Elitetan. I'm probably butchering butchering those names, but um, I, I it it was um not quite the experience I was expecting, just because college, especially being in the SEC, having a big football school, we had a good amount of money, and because of Title IX, money was allocated throughout all the athletic uh, teams. So going from SEC football money to second division uh Swedish team it, it was just a little bit different uh uh of an adjustment there the locker rooms weren't as good um and South Carolina had just gotten new locker rooms the year that I was finishing and yeah so I think my fun fact was just like it's not all glamorous at, at some professional levels um it was still fun I loved my experience getting out like getting overseas experiencing new cultures meeting new people um I still have friends from Sweden that I go see uh some are American some are Swedish but yeah it was not all that it was cracked up to be that I like had put my like sights set on if that makes sense yeah I've read that um or maybe I saw a tweet or something where it's like, enjoy your time in college, like with the college athletics, because once if you do play professionally, don't expect like all this stuff. Yeah. Um. So football can bring in a lot of money. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and basketball, depending on where you're at. Very you know, true. It's Very just true. luxury that you don't have anymore. Now it's you're on your own. And although women's sports is really making a making it up and up. It's not quite football yet. <laughs> yes. I want to ask you about some of your South Carolina teammates, you know, playing with them in the, well, not necessarily with them, but against them in the NWSL. Yeah. Do you have any favorite matchups from former teammates? Majority of the ones that I've played with, um, they're all defenders. So I usually don't have to go up against them too much which is nice. Uh, the only one that I would go up against is Savannah McCaskill. Um, she's a fierce competitor on and off the field. Uh, everything she does is at hundred percent. I think that's like most of us. Um, but my, my heart belongs to Tatum Malazzo. I love her. One of your red star girls. Uh, she was a freshman when I was a senior and we like paired up as buddies. And so I just got to know her really well. So I'm, I wish her all the best and always supporting, supporting her career. She's been killing it. Yes. Tatum is so cool. I had the chance to talk to her um, in the end of June. Nice. So it was really interesting, you know, to, to learn more about like how she made it to the NWSL. Yeah. Um, you kind of have a similar situation with that being a non-roster Mm-hmm. invitee for the courage can you explain the process for um how that all works out because it, sometimes it's very intricate sometimes it's just like oh you get to call me like hey how's yeah. it going? do you, do you want to play some soccer and then yeah so mine was um after my stint in Sweden I decided I was going to go try and play in the NWSL if I made the team great if I didn't I was going to hang up the boots forever um I had three teams that I was looking at and it was Chicago red stars, uh, sky blue, which is Gotham now and the North Carolina courage. Um, I spoke to all three coaches. I looked at the rosters and sky blue had the most open roster availability. Um, the courage was absolutely stacked with national team players from all around the world. Um, and they had one roster spot and, one of my friends, my really good friends that actually helped me get the job over in Sweden, she had a serious conversation with me and she was like, if you want to enter this league, you may as well like see if you can truly enter the league by going on to the courage. And she told me, don't even think that you're going to get playing time for the first two years. Um, your time is going to be in that third, fourth year. 
you need to fo- like set your sights on one making the roster two like fighting like hell to um get playing time and when the girls who are on the national team leave for the world cup the olympics that's when you need to like show what you can do so i got to learn from abby dahlkemper and abby urseg and um so many other great players it, it was quite difficult shoes to fill but um they taught me well it's very interesting that you bring up like the amount of national team players that were on the courage because <laughs> i think about back then like all these Stack. different rosters were stacked <laughs> and i mean even now like virtually any team mm-hmm. standings doesn't really matter all these rosters are stacked. The competition in the NWSL compared to maybe other leagues, I'm not going to compare here because some people don't like that. But I'm just saying, it's pretty good. Yeah, and the 2018 Courage was... We lost one game in the entire season, and we played in the International Champions Cup. We played in like preseason tournaments. We played in the entire league season and then the championship tournament. It was one heck of a team to be a part of. Yes. I, I arrived on preseason and it had like the deer in headlights moment of like, holy crap, like this is Lynn Williams, Crystal Dunn, this is Abby Dahlkemper, Abby Ursig, Sabrina D'Angelo, who I played in college with, who was on the Canadian national team, just stacked. Yes. Yeah. Super stacked. And if people don't know anything what we're talking about, go look it up. Like, Having Please. a box midfield with Dabinia, Sam Ewis, Crystal Dunn, Denise O'Sullivan, and McCall Zerboni, it's unstoppable. <laughs> yes. Brittany Radcliffe is the only one that was able to get one by us. <laughs> and I can say that because we've talked about it multiple times already <laughs> as teammates. And we're like, you're the one that just ruined the whole season <laughs> for us. But- well, at least, you know, you're playing with her now and yeah and we're good friends it's, it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> it's still a dagger but it's fine <laughs> yeah I, I feel that I feel that uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the resurgence of the courage um late in the season talking about playoff hopes um one of your teammates has been on fire I don't even know if that would even be the right word there's got to be a better word can you talk a little (laughs) bit about the resurgence of the courage late in this season yeah um we are trying to trying something new we we went a lot of games in a row after the challenge cup um where you know we had a really good stint of time and obviously we won the challenge cup so after that, it was a bit of a fallout and we went through multiple games of like start trying new formations, trying new lineups. And um, we finally kind of have locked in the personnel a bit more. So I think now it's just build that chemistry um, with seven games coming up in this next month. It's going to be how the heck do you recover um, for a Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday game for three weeks straight. Um, but I think. I, I I think the way that we are competing, especially in the last two out of three games, um, we have a good shot at doing that. We have the personnel. I think our entire roster is stacked. We have um, a really, really deep bench. There's so many players on our bench who I think would be starters on other teams. Um, and I like our coach has a pretty tough decision when it comes to who to start and who not to. And, who's on fire one week and who's, you know, maybe a little off that week. Um, So every single day in practice, it's just nonstop competitive training. I just want to ask you about um, Sean Nahas. Like what have you seen from him bring to the team this season? Um, Just how has he been as a coach this year? Um, Yeah, I think a lot of people question the offseason trades. But um, I'll, I'll give him some massive kudos for the players that he's brought in. Um, Fuka is phenomenal. Like I just watching a lot of the Japanese players play, it looks like the game is going in slow motion for them. And it's just beautiful to watch. And I'm just thinking like, 
And it might be that I'm a center back and, you know, I'm not have I'm not used to pressure coming from behind me, only coming at me from the front. So to just know and see her spatial awareness and just little touches to get out of pressure. I'm like, wow. And then obviously Carolyn is a huge threat. Um, she's, she's fast. She's dynamic. Her foot skills are unbelievable. She has a great connection with Dabinia. Um, I, I think he's just built a really strong roster after so many people doubted us. Um, when you bring in 13 new faces, that that's a lot of change, but I, I just think overall our entire roster is so good and so strong. So I give him a lot of kudos for that. I didn't realize that was 13 new players. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Yeah. I'm so. trying to think. I don't think I can even name all of them. I don't know that much about the courage. That's not not my not my team. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> I will say I am a Chicago Red Stars fan through and through, only because from my home state. Oh, um, yeah. I don't think I'm just going to say this. I don't think I could ever wear courage gear after the final from a few years ago. That hurts my soul. The 4 0. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun to be a part of. <laughs> fun for you, not for me. I was like <laughs> away from my phone. I was on a retreat um, for my high school. I was away from my phone. I was like, Mom, give me my phone. And she goes, I left it at home. I'm like, are you kidding me? I want to know the Red Star score. <laughs> and so I'm like, give me your phone. I pull up a Safari. I type it in. I look at her phone and I say, God damn it. <laughs> and I give her back the phone. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a strong performance. If there's any other, you know, like to put it lightly, a very strong <laughs> performance put together by the courage that day. I don't think I've ever seen like any highlights from it or whatever. I should probably after this I'm gonna look and, and okay, see it was what the happened. Year before in 2018, we played Chicago Red Stars in the semifinal in Portland. And that was a game of like inches. The in the first 10 minutes, I think Yuki Nagasato hit the crossbar and the post and Sam Kerr also hit the crossbar and then we get a chance on the breakaway on the other side like Jess McDonald gets played a through ball and scores and it was completely out of like the run of play they had all the momentum we just hit a quick transition and then game change from there but oh my gosh if if there was a game to watch that is that is a solid one and you have a Sam you a strike from like 35 yards out that just like hits upper mm. 90. <laughs> that sounds sounds cool i guess i got two videos to watch now um challenge cup you brought it up earlier mm -hmm. it was a win for the courage not expected from my end and from other people as well um that was a very hectic game to say the least <laughs> um <Yep. laughs> just want to know your thoughts on um uh, how I guess preseason was for the courage. And if you like noticed anything during the beginning stages of the challenge cup that you were like, okay, we have a really good shot of winning this thing. And then obviously, you know, crowned winners at the end. Yeah. Um, we just kept trying different things all throughout preseason. I think that's what preseason is exactly for um, who's going to play, uh, in what form, like position, what formation are we going to play? What matches our personnel the best? Um, so we kept trying a bunch of things. We tried the four three three for a really long time, and then switched to the box that a lot of the veterans knew, um, and it was doing really well. And then we started going away from some of the things that were making us successful. And at one point, like I wasn't sure that we were going to win the Challenge Cup. Um, we, we just got away from how we were playing and what was making us successful. So it was really difficult to bring those characters back in that, that character back in and just re-solidify the group. Um, but at the end of the day, like when you put $10,000 on the line, it is, you are going to put your face in front of the ball. If that's what it takes. Um, and, and we turned it around and I think we used everyone's strengths and, you know, we got Carolyn down line 
And that that's something that's really important. Like she's so fast and she's so dynamic. If we can get her out wide a little bit, taking people on in the dribble, it's great. And if you have Deanna or Donez on the backside, chip her a ball, 99% of the time is probably going to go in or at least be a shot on target. So we just started really matching the personnel and it just completely changed once, you know, we, we started utilizing the strengths of each person to the best, like of our abilities. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I want to say I, I saw the first half of the game, then I had to go to work, which is like, oh, I can't believe <laughs> I got to leave after watching just like one half of the game. And then I log on to Twitter after and I'm like, Okay, that happened. <laughs> Moving yep. on. Time for regular Moving season. Yeah. Even though it was kind of like intertwined. Didn't the regular season already started before mm-hmm. the final? Yep. We had to, we just had our home opener that was rescheduled like yeah. last week because it was supposed to be May 7th, March 7th, and May 7th. Yeah. So it was, it was weird. And then we went to LA, played a regular season game, then came back and had to go play Kansas city for the semifinals. And then we were supposed to play at home against Portland that got postponed. So then we played the spirit for the the challenge cup final. <laughs> got it. Yeah. The schedule has always been an issue. If anything, um, <laughs> I don't want you to get fined. So I'll say it. The schedule sucks. Fix it. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, don't have them play preseason and regular season games in the same time frame. That's awful. Yeah. It, it was better. very strange. Very strange, to say the least. Yes. It, it's just so much easier to conclude one thing before you get started on the next instead of, like, jumping back and forth. And, Yeah. <laughs> the new commish said that she was gonna look into fixing the schedule although i i would like to say i don't know how that could possibly be done because every time i was gonna yeah. make a joke but you know what i'm gonna scratch that one Get it. <laughs> um do you have any new thoughts on the new commission and, and what she's done i know she's been doing a listening tour i believe is what she's calling it um have you had a chance to talk to her about anything or maybe talk her talking with the team um i have not personally had any chance to talk with her um even with my little my two month stint with the pa now as vice president um i've heard a lot about her but my own personal communication with her is it's just not there um luckily we have our executive director that takes care of majority of that and um, it's from what it seems like we're really trying to re-solidify the trust between the PA and the NWSL. Um, the, the players just after the last year have had their doubts and, um, it's going to take a little bit of time to rebuild that trust, but I think she's doing a good job of attempting to, you know, form a bridge, let us all pass over into it and then, you know, get on the same page and wavelength. Yes, I did want to ask you about the NWSLPA. For those that don't know, can you explain what that is? And then uh, following that, can you talk about your new role? Yeah. Um, So the Players Association is a new union um, that we created, I think, two, three years ago. So it's extremely new. Um, We're up in the works of it. We were just able to create a our first CBA, which is huge and has been just lifting up our entire league so much. Um, across the board, it co- it just uh, makes sure that everyone has a baseline of our basic needs. Um, salaries all have to be within a certain um, range. And it went from 22,000 as our ma- minimum last year to a 35,000. So $13,000 jump, which is huge for a lot of us. Um, and that just makes it so much more of a livable wage. So um, the no more side hustles campaign really helped. And that was something that was put on by the PA because we we were working a full-time job here and then having to recover is majority of our job because once we're done with our practice for the day, unless you have a side hustle, you need to recover for the next practice session. So you're at your best. 
Um, and the PA, luckily, like we had amazing lawyers and they fought tooth and nail to make sure that, you know, we were going to get what we needed to be able to compete at the highest level and be the greatest league in the world. If, you know, obviously you just said that that might be controversial. Some people might say that it's not, but I think across the board from team one to team 12, each game is competitive. You you have no idea who's going to win. Yes. I have a no side hustle shirt. I don't think I brought it with me to school, but I have one. I love it. I don't have proof, but it's okay. I definitely believe you. I believe you. Um, Um, And then my personal role, I just got named. I was a player rep for the last year and a half. Um, So I did a lot of work with at like as a player rep on the CBA um, get, getting my player's point of view and then bringing it back to the table and just, you know, making sure that we had the proper hotels and food and, um, to resources for every team. And then now I, I had talked to Megan Burke and, um, some of the other execs and they thought I might be good fit for the vice presidency. And so my major role is starting to talk to different companies about partnerships, um, how do we really help the players and get them the best resources that they can, whether that's while we're athletes now, or is it going to help us set up for our future? Um, yeah, that's, that's my main goal right now, but I'm still heavily onboarding. So not, not super far into it yet, but I have a two year stint. I have plenty of time to make up for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, one of the, the, best things to come out of this season is primetime NWSL final. Um, (laughs) Do you know how that whole thing came together? Were you a part of that at all? I had not heard about it until it got released. Um, I think Megan Burke was definitely in the know and maybe our president Tori Huster may have been in the know, but um that was not something I was aware of until it got announced, but thank goodness it, it's, it's huge. Cause originally I think it was supposed to be at 12 PM Eastern time, which there was originally talk of, Oh, like we'll have Portland hosted. And we're like, okay, so if you want us to play a 9 AM game there. We're going to have to eat breakfast at five. Like, no, <laughs> no, that's not happening. Um, so this is huge. And I think with the women's Euros, we just proved that a lot of people are interested in watching women's soccer. Um, it, it's really up and coming. So with 365 million worldwide views, I think that's just huge. Like I, I can't emphasize enough how how crazy that event was. And then to have it now transpire, hopefully into the NWSL's uh, primetime game. I'm excited. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes, I remember everything last year. Um, with the whole like planning of it. I don't know why the league always wants Portland to host everything. I don't understand. It's on the other side of the country. Like, how does that help anyone? Yeah, I. I mean, they have great facilities. They do. Um, they have the resources, and pretty much any team that's paired up with an MLS team. You know, you just have the grand stadium, which is nice. Um, so I think that's why. But Audi is clearly a great venue as well. Yes. I have not been to Portland nor D.C. because I okay. uh, I don't travel. That's um, okay. <laughs> but I, from what I've seen on TV, both places are nice. Although mm-hmm. my only thing with the, <laughs> the West Coast is that, you know, again, the time difference yeah. Um, so when I heard that they were moving last year's final to Louisville, I was mm-hmm. like, thumbs up to that. Cause I can watch it. Yeah. And then I had to go to work. I don't, maybe I'm not so... work schedule. <laughs> I... <laughs> One thing I get made fun of a lot is, is the amount of jobs that I worked last year. Cause I was doing community college and then I was working like three jobs at, at the same time because I'm, I don't know. Because I like doing things. <laughs> yeah. College wasn't exciting enough. <laughs> no, I mean, I was doing online school. So okay, it was mostly online. I only had like two classes that I had to go in person for. Okay. But um, so I was doing like, we'll call them side hustles. 
no more side hustles for NWSL players, but for me, <laughs> I'll do them. It's fun. okay. Um, so I was doing, I was working for two hockey teams and then a, my local like park district child care place. So nice. Awesome. Very fun time to hear four year olds tell me that I'm 36 years old. <laughs> I just had a kid on the sideline asked me after the Portland game if I was 50 and I was like oh my gosh that's just so heartbreaking (laughs) these wrinkles like I need to do something about them because if he thinks I'm 50 oh my god it's like I don't think you (laughs) definitely don't look 50 no and I I totally understand that kids have zero concept of time like when I was young 30 was like unimaginable and I'm like approaching that door Oh my God, I'm about to like be the Grim Reaper. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> I mean, I I turned 20 in June and I was like, I'm not a teenager anymore. Like, what what is time? You're such a baby still. Oh my gosh. Not really. <laughs> so many years ahead. Like oh. You can't drink alcohol legally like yet. You got time. I know, but I feel like I don't. <laughs> It's just like I gotta do all these things. This is why you're then... doing side hustles. <laughs> I I told when I tell people it's like okay, I, like I tell my family, okay, I'm doing another interview today, and they're like, "For what job? You just got one." And I'm like, "Geez, guys, yeah, for just my support. show, yeah, come on, just support it." <laughs> <laughs> I I told them. I think I told them over like a, a family dinner that I got like my fourth job because I had four at one time because I'm so cool. Yeah, I got all these jobs, um, but everything was part time. Okay. And so they all they all stopped what they were doing. They looked at me and they're like, "Are you serious?" And I'm like, "What? Got to pay for gas." Sounds like a lot. I mean, I know gas is expensive, but I don't think it's four jobs expensive. <laughs> I wasn't being paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the real issue there. The wage issue of... I'll just say that for the teams that I worked for, they do not pay enough. And that's all I'm going to say. Because if okay. I get another job with any of them in the future probably not but if i do i think the wage sucked okay good to know (laughs) it was bad although illinois just raised their minimum wage okay it's 12 and then by 2025 it'll be 15 oh all right right. moving up in the world not with the inflation happening but it's fine (laughs) (laughs) well at least um the NWSL players got a nice little pay raise. Well, little thirteen thousand isn't little. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a solid jump, solid jump, solid jump. Um, would you like to participate in a lightning round? Always, always, bring it. Okay, <laughs> my first question always is: if you're reading a book or listening to an audio book. Would you like to share with the world what it is or or just like any book, audiobook you want to recommend? Okay. Um I oh my gosh, what was the book I was just reading? I went through a series so fast. Oh, it was The Immortal Instruments. So good. It's like seven books. Seven? Yeah, I I blew through them. Like Every single away trip, I would just read through the entire thing. And I just got like, um, I think I have them all fantastic. I could not put them down. That was like the one time where I was books over TV. Usually I'm just like in front of the TV. (laughs) But that was something I could not put down. So if you like fiction, fantasy, that kind of thing. Who wrote the book for those interested? So you had to ask. I think it's Cassandra something. It's an author that writes books. And there's the answer on that one. Cassandra Clare, The Mortal Instruments. So good. There we go. Mm-hmm. Look it up. So My follow up mm-hmm. to that is that there's been um, a Colleen Hoover storm or, or, or whatever, because um, I'm so good at terminology. NWSL players, all I hear is that they read her books. Are you one of those players that reads her books? 
No, I live under a rock. I don't even know who you're talking about. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. She is a fiction author. Okay. That that's all I know. Um when I was talking to Bianca St. George, mm -hmm. she was telling me that she's recently been obsessed. Um I heard uh, I watched like one of those US Women National Team videos and they were saying like what book they're reading right now. Mm -hmm. That's like Sophia Smith. I think Trinity Robin, um, we're all talking about her. So there's there's a recommendation, I guess, for you. Okay. Although I Good. I have no idea what it is. Um, I don't read that much. But okay. you're in college, right. four jobs. You're supposed to be reading the. Textbook. I don't have four jobs anymore. I have one job, and now I, I don't even read my textbooks. How about the notes? <laughs> I look at the presentations after class. Okay, it works. It's still reading. <laughs> For my family that's listening, I definitely do take notes. They don't watch the YouTube version of this, so it's fine. They won't know. They're never going to know. <laughs> You're never going to know. Never going to know. know. Um, what is your favorite stadium to play in outside of your home one? um that is that is tough um I gotta give massive kudos to Angel City that was more fans that I've ever played in front of um so that was my first big stage like a lot of people are watching um I had never been able to not hear my teammates on the field before so that was something really hard to adjust to um yeah so and then they just had like a fireworks show because i think we were their opening game so everything about that was like a super cool experience um i almost always love playing in portland uh they also have a really strong like fan fan base but then i gotta give kudos to um god there's too many like each person kind of has their own thing like LA had like the theatrics and Portland just has like an overall strong um, fan base. And then you have like the light show of Louisville and then you have like super cool, like music that's always played in the light show in Houston. So I'm just, Oh, I can't choose. <laughs> There's so many good ones out there that it's just so hard to pick. Yeah. each I like each one for different reasons, but like Louisville music, no Houston music, Louisville light show. Portland, I love the weather and the fan base, and then LA, the theatrics. Cool. Final one, day, one day I gotta go to the bank. Gotta mm -hmm. check out the bank. It yeah. looks cool. It was very cool. Gotta very make cool. it out to Cali one day. Gotta make it out to all. The, I want to go to each NWSL stadium. I've only been to one, so yeah. I'm gonna. You, you got a lot of catching up to do, and then they're gonna just keep adding on you. I think. Yeah. So, so you, you might need to like start bopping a little bit. <laughs> well, I was thinking um, possibly of doing like a little drive down to Kansas City because it's not that far away. Okay. I mean, it's far, but it's not that far away. What's not that far away? How many it's hours? Like, it's like a three hour drive from okay. Lincoln. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not that bad. Yeah. That's manageable. Cool. Yeah. So um, I'm excited for Kansas City's new stadium. Yeah. They they've been doing some awesome things with uh their training facility. Uh it, it their, their game I although I hate it because they scored against us, but their game celebrations, their like scoring celebrations were so fun to watch. I, I hated it in the moment, but then like you see the pictures and you're just like, dang, those girls are having a great time. Um and then to have like Patrick Mahomes there in the stands, like that is just super cool. Some, some big football star. And I know his wife is part owner and he's owner of like the men's side, but it's, it's so important to have like crossover of athletes and just seeing him in the stands that day was really awesome. Got a follow up to what mm -hmm. you just brought up about celebration. If you do score a goal, uh coming up in the, the next slew of matches, okay. do you have any sort of celebration prepared no i'm a center back so i typically like don't score 
Um, but it's like a corner were to happen yeah. and you were to like head the ball in or something. I have scored three goals this year and each time I'm like surprised it went in. So we're just going to continue with the like <laughs> sheer shock of what's happening. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with no. I think if I, I'm like kind of weirdly, I'm going to quote the office. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Um, if I were to create a celebration, I think I just won't score. So I'm just not going to, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) What is your go-to coffee order? Ooh. Um, if I'm feeling like the place just isn't set up for the greatest success, then it's just a hot oat milk latte. And if I feel like this place is like nice and I feel a little bougie, then I get a extra hot oat milk latte with cinnamon powder steamed into the milk. Cinnamon powder steamed into the milk. That's interesting. Gives it like a little extra like snap of flavor. Um, without being like sickly sweet because I don't like the vanilla syrups or anything like that. It's good. It's good. Solid. Yeah. If you could design your team's uniform for next season, what would be an element that you would put into it? Interesting. Um, we did the, I really liked the kind of like ocean wave vibe that we had last year. I think those were uh, really pretty. And then obviously we're the color blue. So I think I would go back to that. Yeah. Sticking with the ocean. Okay. You're going to steal a San Diego's whole, whole thing. Yeah. But we had it first before they were even a team. So ha. yeah. Be like, this is, we are <laughs> the original way. Yeah. So come at us. I'm stealing it. Uh, my final question for you is what is your go to restaurant in Cary? My go to restaurant? Um, I don't really have one in Cary. More Raleigh. I think the one I've been to the most is Vidrio. We used to be kind of sponsored by them, and we had our um, like 2018 and 2019 meet the owners meet and greet thing in the beginning of the year there and every time I've been there back with like my parents we've just had like a great time where you can share plates and get different kinds of food so I love anything tapas cool we're now at the end of today's episode but before you tell the folks listening where to follow you on social media at the end of this season's episodes we're due and shout outs is there anyone you would like to shout out before we end today's episode oh i'll give a shout out to my locker buddy brianna pinto she's she's been a rock i love her so much <laughs> all righty now it is time to tell the folks where you are at on social you know when your next game is well two weeks from now we'll skip that part that doesn't okay. matter social <laughs> i guess where they can watch yeah courage play and stuff like that okay well if you're ever in carry come out to wake med soccer park uh you can watch games either on twitch or paramount plus or cbs something and yeah and then you can always find me at kaylee kurtz on twitter instagram uh tiktok but i don't ever post so you probably shouldn't do that instagram is my main form of social so follow me there (laughs) all right now it's time for my least favorite part of the episode this is my ending spiel. It's oh. a mess. I gotta, <clears throat> gotta get all situated here. All right. All right. If you want to follow me on social media, guess what? You can. I'm on four different platforms on Twitter. It is W Sports Matter. And on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, it is Women's Sports Matter. See, it's so easy because it's the name of the show. So you have no excuse not to follow. If you want to listen to the two other podcasts, a part of the Women's Sports Matter podcast network, they are Don't Touch My Jersey, hosted by C. Rivers, and More Than 5%, hosted by Carly Jackson and Zoe Hicks. More Than 5% is debuting on September 29th, so make sure you go check that out. 
And if you want to listen to Don't Touch My Jersey, it is already airing on Spotify, Apple, and all other podcasting platforms. If you want to check out the resources section, you can do that. There's so many great resources listed down below. If you want to register to vote, want to find a COVID vaccine, want to look up uh, the different player associations for women's sports leagues in the United States, they're all listed down below. If you're a college student like me and you're away from home, order a mail-in ballot. It's super easy. Go to your county's website and order one. It takes like five minutes. It's really easy. I did it. It wasn't that hard. So you have no excuse not to do it. I don't know what else is there is to promote. <laughs> Check out my rest of the NWSL interviews for the month of September. I don't know who's coming on here next, so so don't ask. Um, but by the time this is out, maybe I will know, and you'll know, and I'll tell you about it on Twitter, so make sure to go follow if you want to learn more about that. Thank you again, Kaylee, for coming on this episode of Women's Sports Matter. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and hanging out here. Of course. Thank you for having me. That's going to be it for me today. Again, thank you again so much for listening to another episode of the Women's Sports Matter podcast. My name is Gianna Castro, and I'm your host. I will see you next week with another interview. Peace out. That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>